one of the questions that I have is, look, we talked a little bit about how uh, willingness, uh, your willingness to just sort of speak your mind as long as it's fair. Um, a lot has happened uh, since we last saw each other. In particular, it seems as though a bit of a tide has turned when it comes to American soccer, which you played for the men's national team, but you also have a strong connection to Mexico. And yeah. it seems like some players have started to either choose Mexico or flirt with the idea of playing for Mexico more. Um, yeah. What do you think? I, I'm not, I kind of struggle to because part of the question I want to ask is what, where, where are we as America failing? But I think the the stronger question is probably what needs to change to get there. So maybe from your viewpoint, why do you think that decision is a little bit easier, seemingly, for people to make to to for the young players to make to choose Mexico? And and is that a tie that can stop? Is that something that the U.S. soccer can do to change that? Yeah, I think you're referring to Jonathan Gonzalez, which was one of the the first mm -hmm. players that this happened to in in recent times. And then Efrain, you know, Alvarez for for the yeah. Galaxy, who's kind of been flirting uh, yeah. with U.S. and Mexico at a youth national team level. He's obviously got a very bright future. He's super important. Yeah, he's going to be a very good player. Mexico has him on his radar for a reason. We, should, the United States, should have him on your, on their radar for a reason. Uh, but it's representation. I mean, when you look at U.S. soccer across the board. Go into the website, look at the board. When you look at, you know, the the chair. When you look at, you know, certain individuals at an electoral position, who looks like us? You know, how many minorities are there? They talk about this diversity task force. You know, who's on it? Uh, why is it that, uh, you know, I I've, I had a 17 year career, had a very off the beaten path type of trajectory. Trajectory didn't play youth national teams, didn't go to college. But I still got to the U.S. men's national team. I played in a Copa America, played in a World Cup, played in a club World Cup. You know, why is it I got to where I was? Can they benefit from maybe a little expertise? How is it that Jose Torres got to where he was? How is it that, you know, Michael Orozco, uh, you know, uh, how could DeMarcus Beasley help them get more kids from African-American communities, from urban communities? Why isn't the net cast further enough for us to get these kids who are slipping through the cracks? You know, why is the sport so expensive in our country um they've never once picked up the phone they've never once talked to demarcus beasley or jose torres or michael orozco or myself and be like hey what can we do to get more kids like you what do you think what are we not doing right the arrogance of it, it, it is it's comical if you really think about it you know and, and it, it still happens to this day and um, that's that's why these kids all of a sudden um their parents, when they have a decision to make of, you know, helping their kids, guiding them of where they want to play, these kids are born in the States. They identify with the American school system. They identify with their friends. They speak Spanish and English at home. Uh, they identify to the multicultural. It's just as easy for them to play for Mexico as it is the United States. Yeah. What incentive do they have to play? And I'm not talking about make it easy, pay them. I'm not talking about give them the, the jersey, the opportunity, make it that much. No, I'm talking about make it relatable to them. Uh, you know, understand what their parents, these, these you know, immigrant parents coming to this country looking for a better life, these second and third generation kids, understand what they're going through on the daily, understand the, the struggles. And we unfortunately do not do that. Yeah, there is a, a we, we had um, spoken to uh, Sebastian Salcedo. Who uh, also represents? Bojo. Yeah, Bojo. He's yeah. killing it right and, now, Pumas. And, yeah. and we we spoke to him and, and kind of had that conversation about that. It, you know, us you, uh, same thing. Immigrant parents, uh, uh, and, and there is a, a uh, an appreciation that we have for the United States that includes th that Latino experience. And it, America j doesn't just have to be what you know what what you know Captain America and the. Right. traditional sort of, uh, you know, things that we are given. But uh, we also spoke to Giuseppe Rossi, who kind of spoke to the same thing in a non-Latin sense. He was like, in my house, it was Italian soccer only. So yeah. he was like, well, to me, he's like, everyone paints it as a decision between the U.S. and Italy. He's like, to me, oh. there was no decision. If <laughs> Italy called you, that was your grandfather's dream. That was your father's dream. That was your mother's dream. It, it became very, my it's dream. Decision. It's a very intimate and personal decision. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times i've run across and this is the funny thing with me i guess the identity i don't know if you guys were the same growing up but i heard oftentimes stop acting white oh yeah, you know? yeah because i didn't speak with an accent i'm like you know my you know the guy who was telling me you know never been to mexico had never been to latin america but he speaks with an accent because that's the way he heard it at home and he's telling me stop acting white and it's like why well what does this mean you know like we have this identity issue growing up and 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 
when you're forced to pick, it's like, why do I have to choose? This is who I am. I'm Mexican American. Yeah. You know? You know, my roots, my Mexican roots are just as important to me as wearing the U.S. men's national team jersey, or, you know, as represent, having dignified representation. Like, I will do everything in my power once that jersey is on to make sure it is represented in the best possible manner. But I'm also going to, you know, drink some Coronas and, and Modelos and, yeah. and some tacos with my family yeah. and, yeah, yeah, and yeah, dude. rancheras and whatnot. As like, the same thing, why, you know, 4th of July, listen to Jay-Z or Kanye and get some hot dogs on the grill. Exactly. I have the luxury, the benefit and the privilege and honor of being multicultured that's yeah. not a bad thing exactly yeah i, I used to be they, these people used to tell me stop acting white and then if i was on the phone up until i was about 17 years old they'd be like oh well thank you miss i'm like okay wait hold on <laughs> <laughs> that's a difference <laughs> yeah. hey wait hold on i think <laughs> i guess what I happened, happened? <laughs> is there something wrong with the phone <laughs> sorry this is the fifth phone you've returned i think it's hello christina yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, to me, it's it's like if, you know, look, Cuban, obviously, it wasn't a, a soccer powerhouse. But growing up, the house I grew up in was like Little Havana. And if right. if, you know, if the Cuban baseball national team called and said, we want you to play here and America said we want you to play here, it would be a difficult decision. And my grandfather would be sitting there crying with a <laughs> Cuban flag being like, I guess you could decide whichever one you want. Blah, blah, but, you know, like. I can understand how difficult that decision, but there, it does seem that maybe as early as maybe 10, 15 years ago, really when you were sort of maybe even starting, it was an easy decision to pick America because it was like everyone, all hands on deck, U.S. soccer, we're building up to this point. And Mexico seemed like it was all like kind of erratic at, 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 uh, for the national team. But now it seems like it's becoming an easier decision to go the other way. So it's important, I think, like what you said, that representation will make a huge pull. And it's a little of a shame that they haven't reached out yet. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't I don't know if they'll ever do it. I think it's important to understand where you're failing um, on all levels. Uh, this missing of the 2018 World Cup uh, wasn't just one game. You know, if you say it's one game, you're papering over the cracks. You're papering over what's really important here, what we haven't done as a footballing nation. Mm -hmm.